Good morning. Are you awake? Are you excited? You have your Red Bull this morning? Your coffee, if you're not saved? Hey, we are glad you are here. We are glad that it is not a million degrees outside. Who was outside yesterday when it was like you were gonna die if you were out there? Yep, I was too. And then my wife and I were like, you know what? It's so hot. Let's go to the beach, let's go swim. So we got our sun already, we got there, and 15 minutes later it started downpouring. It was awesome. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, would you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor? neighbor. All right, half of you said it, try it again. Say, neighbor. neighbor. All, you need is love. All you need is love. Now turn to your other neighbor that you just ignored that obviously needs your love, and say, da 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 da. There you go. Now we're singing. This morning, I want to talk to you uh, a little bit about love. Everyone said love. Love. And I thought, you know what? Let's start with some things that I love. Let me share with you some things that I love. So first and foremost, obviously I love God. If I didn't say that, I might be fired. So God's number one. Second is my family. This is a picture of my wife and my son, Barrett. If you did not know, my wife is pregnant with our second son due in November. Yes. What else do I love? I love New Hope. I love NH Youth. Uh, this is a picture that was taken like right here at this altar area at a live conference, which is another thing that I love. Uh, I love summer. I love mountains. So this summer we took a vacation to Glacier National Park and we hiked six miles up to this lake with Barrett on my back. And then my dad took him because I couldn't do it. Uh, any sports fans out there? Any sports fans? I got some, some teams that I love. Uh, don't at me. Don't tell me that my team suck because I already know they do. Uh, I love the Detroit Lions. That's my team. I love the Colorado Rockies. I love the Chicago Bulls. Yeah, they're teams. And because I'm, a, because I'm a Christian, obviously I love Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Christian chicken. Praise God. But we see that the Bible, the Bible has a lot to say about this word love. In the NIV version, we see that love is referenced 551 times. That's a lot. So God has a lot to say about love. And I just shared with you some things that I love. And what I found is that our culture uses this word love a lot. Like, I love the, this team. I love you. And really, we're just like, yeah, you're all right. All right? But we, we use this word love a lot. But I want to see what the Bible says. And we're continuing our series in 1 Corinthians in the 13th chapter. Uh, you maybe have heard this read at weddings, but I want you to know whether you are married or not, this applies to you. This applies to all relationships. It applies to your family, to your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, your spouse. Uh, this applies to you. So let's read 1 Corinthians 13, starting in verse 4. It says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not pr proud. So I guess based off of that, I don't love the teams that I just said, because let me tell you what, I envy, and I definitely do not boast, so that's good. I am, I am not proud, so I, that falls in there, but I definitely have a lot of envy, so I don't love my teams. Verse 5, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Verse 7 is where I really want you to pay attention, so if you ignored me that whole time, pay attention here. It always protects always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you that we have this church that we can gather in. Thank you that there is a sea in here when it is hot outside. God, I pray that you would speak through me, that you would speak to us, that we would see your love in a new way, and that we leave here changed. In your name we pray. Amen. So like I said, I want to talk a little bit about relationships this morning, whether you're married or not, whatever your relationship may be, and I, I want you to see how important relationships are. Who knows that relationships, it's important to have friends. It's important to have people that you can talk to, people that you are close to. In the Bible, it says a lot about relationships. I think it's important to realize the first problem in the Bible wasn't sin. Sin was not the first problem. The first problem was that Adam was alone, and God saw that wasn't okay. So that's the first problem we see. This is, it's a, it's a real 
problem. We are, we are meant to be relational. We are not meant to do life alone. At New Hope, we sit in pews at church, but we're not meant to do life in rows. We want to do it in circles. Get plugged into a small group. Get a group of friends that you can, that you can have surround you. And what I want you to see is that if we learn to have a quality love, that we, this quality love, if we can learn that, then we can have a quality life. Quality love equals a quality life. And the challenging thing is that we don't always know what quality love looks like, right? Lots of times we look at love and we see what it looks like in a Disney movie. We base love off of our desires, off of our feelings, our emotions. We, we look for it in all the wrong places. But here in 1 Corinthians 13, God gives us this incredible map of what quality love looks like. We see that, uh, that he says love is patient, love is kind. He goes on and on and on. And like I said, there's these, these four always that lead to one never. Now, when I was in premarital counseling with my wife, uh, Marin, and Pastor Weaver was, was doing it, there was one thing that he told us, and it's this, that you should avoid these two words in a marriage. What are they? Always and never, all right? Anybody ever heard that before? Avoid words like always and never. Like, for example, you never do the dishes. Anybody ever heard that one before? You never take out the trash. Or you always make me feel this way. Or you're always late. Anybody, where are the people at that have heard that one before? Right? It's, it's these, these always and never uh, and, and what I want you to see is that the words that we use, it builds the world around us. And the words that you're speaking, you're going you're gonna to reap what you harvest and in, in what you speak. So you maybe say, they never do the dishes. The reality is that they, they do the dishes, maybe just not as much as you would want them to do. And it's, a, it's this unmet expectation. And how do we have an unmet expectation? It's maybe because of an unexpressed expectation. But you're saying they, they never do this. The reality is that they do, but now in your mind you're thinking, they never do this. They never help me. They're, they're always doing this. And we build this world, this prison that then we are forced to live into because of our words. But today I want you to see that, that here he gives us four always that lead to one never. A love that never fails. Anybody want a love that never fails this morning? Anybody in second service? First service, there was like two people that raised their hand. They're like, me, I do. And everyone else is like, <laughs> that's how I felt up here too. But we're going to be looking at how to have quality love. So the first thing I want you to see how to have a love that never fails is that love always protects. Love always protects. Now when I think about love protecting, I think about like me having to like flex on somebody, right, that's like trying to mess with my girl or whatever. Uh, like you, you look at her the wrong way. You, uh, I, if I can tell you're thinking something about, if I can even like tell that you're thinking about how good she smells, like we're gonna fight, right? And maybe that's how you view that love always protects. Now understand that yes, love does protect in the physical sense, but also understand guys that not every other guy out there is out to steal your girl, okay? But we see that love, it protects uh, in a physical sense, but we also have the opportunity to protect every single day. We have the opportunity to protect their, their heart and protecting them emotionally and spiritually. Has anyone ever heard of this thing called a hurricane lamp? Anybody ever seen something like this before? Right? It usually sits outside like on a patio or something and you put a, a candle in here. Maybe you're looking at this and you're like, that's an awesome cup. I want to drink coffee out of that. Pastor Luke, March Madness. There you go. But, you're, but the idea of this is that you put the candle in this, and when the wind comes, when the storm comes, that this protects what's inside of it, and it doesn't blow the light out. I want you to know that, that inside of your spouse, inside of your friend, inside of your family member, there's a flame of purpose that God has put on their heart. There's a, a, a flame of dreams, of hopes, and it's not only your job, but it's also your privilege to protect the call of God on their life. We protect them physically. We surround them with prayer. We surround them with that protection, but we also protect them emotionally. In, in Philippians 4, 8, it says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, right, pure, lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So how do we protect emotionally? We control our thoughts. We think about the right things. We, we control what we're thinking about because if I'm thinking about right things, if I'm in the right thinking, when, when someone else is struggling in what they're thinking about and, and thinking about how everyone views them, but I see it the other way, I can help get them back on the right path. I can't lead someone to where I haven't been. 
So if my thinking is struggling and their thinking is struggling, I can't help them along the way, but I need to protect them emotionally with controlling how I think of things. We also protect them spiritually. I want you to know that your prayers for your friends, for your family, for your spouse, those, those change things. Your, your prayers change things, they, they, they help things. And this doesn't have to be like some big fancy prayer, but this also doesn't just mean that it's the, the quick prayer we say at dinner because food's getting cold and we gotta pray quick. Uh, I remember Pastor Micah Mack, he challenged me to pray for my wife every day. Now that doesn't look like I have this like set schedule, this set time, this set place that I do it, but maybe it's when I'm in my truck. Maybe it's when I see my phone and, and there's a picture of her on my background. Maybe it's when I get a text from her and, and I say a prayer. Uh, it doesn't have to be a big fancy prayer. There's this quote that I love that says this, rarely do I pray for more than five minutes, but rarely do I go for more than five minutes without praying. Rarely do I pray for more than five minutes, but rarely do I go for more than five minutes without praying. I think that's telling me this, that, that we need to get to the point and we need to do it often, right? Get to the point and do it often. Enough with these like preaching prayers. Let's get to the point, God knows. Let's say what we need to say and let's do it often. But we have the power to protect. You also have the power to protect in the way that you react or you respond to a problem or a situation. You have the power to protect how you react. Uh, when, when the winds come, when the storm comes in their life, when they have a bad day at work, when they have a bad conversation with a friend, a family member, when they're feeling angry, when they're upset, when they're down, when they're lonely, how you respond to that can protect them. Because it, I think lots of times when, when someone's struggling, when they're upset about something, we think that the best way to support them is, you know what, I'm gonna jump down in that pit with you and I'm gonna agree, yeah, you are so right. Like, they, they were a jerk to you. You should never talk to them again. How dare they think that of you? But there's no healing in that. That's not helping anything when I'm down in the pit with them. If, if Marin is struggling, if Pastor Luke is struggling, whoever's struggling, I don't wanna jump down and just totally agree with them. I wanna be up here where I can pull them up. I can say, you know what? You, you, you have the right to feel that way, but that's not gonna help anything. That's not gonna change anything. And we need to change the way that they think. We need to change the way that they view their situation. I think many times we think to love someone, I gotta tell them everything that they wanna hear. Like, oh, you are so great, you are the best, you are so pretty, but sometimes we gotta speak truth, right? Speaking the truth in love is not just speaking things that someone wants to hear, sometimes it's speaking truth. If you wanna love someone, you gotta speak truth to them. Uh, we see that, that it says speaking truth is love, which to me says that if I'm not speaking truth, if I'm just speaking love, then that's the opposite. But we need to speak truth. We, we need to be honest, but we need to do it gracefully. We need, to, we need to do it with grace. The Bible says that Jesus was full of grace and truth. That's not saying that Jesus was 50% grace and 50% truth. It's saying that he's 100% grace and 100% truth. Listen to this quote. Grace without truth is meaningless, but truth without grace is just mean. Grace without truth is meaningless, but truth without grace is just mean. Anybody ever here ever seen uh, America's Got Talent or one of those like talent shows out there, right? And you know that person that walks out on the stage and they're all super excited to sing and they're saying like, oh, my family, my friends, they encourage me to come out here and they sing and it's horrible. You know what I'm talking about? It's just terrible. That person's got bad friends. Like they should not have just... Like, can you imagine your friend's horrible at singing? You're like, oh yeah, you should go on the biggest stage in the world and sing in front of the whole world. That sounds great. No, right? If Pastor Luke told me he's gonna go on America's Got Talent, I'd be like, dude, let's talk, right? <laughs> but, but we gotta weigh it out it, because all truth and no grace, that's mean. All grace and no truth, that's meaningless. Going on America's Got Talent and being horrible, that's meaningless. But also, does this dress make me look fat? Yeah, it does, that's mean, okay? <laughs> Even if it does, we have to have grace and truth. The same is true spiritually. I think lots of times, uh, all truth and no grace spiritually is, yeah, you're a sinner, you're gonna go to hell. Like, you shouldn't even come to church, right? I think there's people that, that push people away from church because they're all truth. There's, it's just black and white, there's no love, there's no grace to it, it's just this is it, you messed up. And, and there's no grace. But also, we can have so much grace and no truth that we can love people all the way to hell. 
If we don't give people truth, if we say, oh, it's okay that you live that way. Oh, it's okay that you do that thing. We all have sins. We all make mistakes. I'm not going to judge you. Like, it's, it's all good. We're good to go. No, it's not okay that you're doing that. But you know what? Jesus loves you so much that, that he'll change you, that he'll forgive you, that he has something new for you. We see that it's, it's, it's truth, it's grace. It's, it's both of them. That's how we protect. The second thing is that love always hopes. And love always trusts. And I put these two together, and you'll see why here in just a moment. But I think it's important that every relationship has hope in it. Every friendship, every marriage needs hope in it. What's the definition of hope? The first is this, a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. That, that there's better things yet to come. The second is this, definition of hope, a feeling of trust. Hope in your marriage, hope in your relationship is an expectation that I haven't even experienced the best thing yet in this. There's still more for me to get out of this. There's still more for me to give in this. But, but you can't have hope without trust. Maybe that's where you're struggling here this morning. Like that trust has been, that trust has been broken. It's, it's, it's not there anymore. And now you, you think you're protecting yourself by not trusting in one, but really you're hurting yourself because you can't have a true relationship without trust. You can't have a, a true relationship without hope, and you think you're protecting, but it, it, it's just hurting you. So I want to give you three different ways. There's so many different ways, but I picked out just three uh, big ways that I think you can work to build trust. The first is communication. Everyone say communication. Has anybody ever been on a phone call before where you're like telling the story, and you're getting like your arms into it, and you're getting all like pumped up about what you're saying, and then the phone rings, and you're like, who is calling me? And you look, and it's the person that you thought you were just telling the story to. <laughs> Anybody ever had that happen before? You're like, hello? And they're like, yeah, sorry, man. I lost you like three minutes ago. What were you saying? You're like, are you kidding me? Right? You're communicating, but there's no signal. I think there's a lot of relationships here where you're communicating, but you've lost signal. You're talking, and nobody's listening. And maybe it's what you're saying. Maybe it's not what you're saying. Maybe it's how you're saying it. How many know there's a right way and a wrong way to say something? Maybe it's not what you're saying or how you're saying, but maybe it's that you never shut up and listen to the other person. Right? God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. He wants us to listen more than we talk. And maybe if you'd seek to understand before you'd seek to be understood, you might grow a lot quicker in your relationships. Your marriage might be a little stronger if you would listen before you would talk. Your friendships, your family might be a little stronger if you would listen to someone before you would just say everything that you need to say. Communication. The second is, is forgiveness. Being in a relationship, mistakes are always going to happen. There's always going to be things that come up. And it's saying, you know what? I forgive you. That wasn't okay, but I forgive you. And, and you forgive and you do it quickly. Remember a few months ago, we talked about forgiveness. We talked about how offense, it builds offense. There's this wall that comes up in our relationships, and we need to forgive, and we need to do it quickly. The third thing is care. We need to care for them. Mark 12, it talks about uh, how, how we're to love our neighbors as ourself. And that's kind of got turned into the golden rule, treat others as the way you would want to be treated. But today, I want to offer up that in our relationships, in our marriages, in our families, we should go beyond the golden rule, and we should have the platinum rule, which isn't treat others the way I want to be treated. It's, it's love others the way they receive love. People receive love different ways. There's, there's all these different love languages, and it's gift-giving, quality time, physical touch, acts of service, words of affirmation. I, I challenge you, figure out what your love language is. How do you receive love? I would say for my wife, Maren, I would say it's acts of service and quality time. For me, I would say uh, it's words of affirmation and physical touch, like tell me I'm pretty and give me a kiss, right? <laughs> that's not for you guys, that's for my wife. <laughs> I'm going to get some weird texts later. <laughs> guys, your love language may be physical touch, but hers may be acts of service, maybe just maybe. This is for the married couples. If you would speak her love language, maybe she would speak yours. I see some light bulbs like, ah, okay, right? Find out what, what that love language is. Don't just love people the way you want to be loved. Love them the way they receive love. Love them how they want it, that, and that will build 
trust. If, if you're showing them that, that you care, that you know how they receive, that builds trust, and that trust will build hope, and you're going to need hope in your relationships because not every day is easy. Not every day is fun. It gets hard. It gets difficult. The wind blows, and we need that trust. We need that hope that, you know what? It's hard right now, but, but there's something better. The best is yet to come in this relationship. So we see that love protects, love trusts, love hopes, and the third thing is that love always perseveres. Perseverance. That's not really a fun or flashy word, right? It's like, ah, oh, yeah, perseverance. Sweet. But what is that? It's, it's sticking in it even when you want to give up. It's holding on when you want to let go. I remember, uh, this has happened a few times, but I remember uh, I talked to Pastor Luke and, and his brother Levi one time because I was like, all right, I need to get back into the gym. I need to start working out. And so we're like, all right, we're going we're gonna to go to the gym. And I, I, I put boundaries in that relationship, like every relationship should have boundaries. It's like, all right, here's the deal. I don't run, I don't jog, and I don't do cardio. All right? That's it. That's the boundary. So, that, so we go to the gym. We go to the locker room and change. And we go out. And you know what his brother Levi says? He's like, all right, let's start with a, with a jog. I'm like, are you kidding me? Right? And we, we, we do this run on the treadmill. Finally, we're done. He's like, all right, now let's start the workout. I'm like, what? Start the workout? I'm done. And we go over, and we, we lift, we push, we pull, we throw, we jump on, jump over, crawl under, spin around, everything in the stupid gym. <laughs> Until finally we're done, and then we go jog again. I don't get it. Now, here's the thing. Through it, it hurt. It's hard. You sweat. It's not fun. Obviously, you can tell I haven't really stuck to it. <laughs> but here's the deal. In that workout, in that time that I went to the gym, I persevered. I, I went through. I didn't quit. I didn't give up in that whole time. I, I, I kept on going. And looking back at that time, looking back at any time I've been in a gym, there's something that I've realized. It's not, there's not one moment where I've been in a gym where I've been the best person in there where I'm the strongest person there. There's not one moment where I had perfect form. If I have to have other people come and show me the right form, I had to have other people come and spot me and, and encourage me, you can do it, come on, three more, two more, one more, where, where people are encouraging me, they're building me up. There's not one moment I was the best, but I persevered, I got through, I had other people come along and encourage me. There's some relationships here where you're struggling and you need to be encouraged that it's okay to have people come alongside you, it's okay to go to counseling, it's okay to have people spot you in your relationship, push you, challenge you, it's okay to not have perfect form. We're not after perfection, we're after progress. Progress, perseverance, push through, get through that difficult time. Get help. Don't quit. Don't give up. You have what it takes because the Holy Spirit dwells within you if you've accepted Jesus into your life. If you have Jesus in your life, you have what it takes. I'm not saying that if you accept Jesus, it's all going to be easy and it's all going to be great, but you have what it takes. You have what it takes to push through. And understand that he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's always going to be with you. And some seasons are not easy. Some seasons are difficult. There are people here who are, who are very sick, and, and you have cancer. There are people here with financial difficulties, with, with struggles in your marriage, struggles in your family, and you never thought that, that you would get to this point. But there are also people here who have gone through those similar things, and they've pushed through, they've persevered, and they got help. They, they, they held on when it was hard. They kept going, they kept running the race, and they said, you know what, this season's not easy, but I'm gonna push through. I'm gonna get some people around me who can encourage me, who can build me up, who can speak life, who can speak health, who can speak purpose into my life. It's perseverance. James 1, verse 2 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Perseverance says it makes you mature and complete. Mature and complete. You come out better when you don't quit. You come out stronger when you don't give up. Perseverance. So how do we have a love that never fails? A love in our marriage, a love in our relationships, in our friends, in our family. How do we have that love that never fails? We protect, we hope, we trust, we persevere. How do we protect, hope, trust and persevere, we, we, it comes through what Jesus has demonstrated for us. 
John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. 1 John 4, verse 7, it says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one else has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. Whoever loves knows God. If you know God, you love people. If you don't love people, it says you don't know God. But if you know God, his love lives in us. And in verse 11 through 12, it says, Since God loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. People can see God through us when we love them. You want to you wanna be a witness at your workplace? You want to be a witness in your family? Love people. If you love people, God shows up. God's there in the middle of that. If you would stand across the room this morning with me as we get ready to close. And that, when I read that verse, it just really stuck out to me where it says, whoever loves knows God. If you do not love, you do not know God. If you're here this morning and, and you don't have Jesus in your life and you can see that because you aren't loving people. Loving people is not something you do. You don't love and you want Jesus and to accept him into your heart and to have him live through you and you want to follow him for all your days and have that love flow out of you with everyone looking around because this is a public thing. This should not be like, um, I want Jesus in my life, but I don't want people to know. No, this is something that we celebrate. This is something we're excited about. If that's you and you want to accept Jesus into your life, would you just raise your hand saying, that's me. I want Jesus in my life. See your hand. See your hand. Maybe this morning as we went through these things about about love that never fails, and we talked about how, how it protects, it hopes, it trusts, it perseveres. And you would say, I'm struggling in one of those things. I could do better at hoping. I could do better at, at, at persevering, at, at trusting, at protecting. If that's you, would you say, that's me. I need to do better in one of those areas. Yep, my hand's up. So here's what I wanna do this morning. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray to close. And we're just gonna spend some time just seeking after God because as we seek after him, as we're filled up with him, that love flows out of us. And the altar space is open. If you wanna come pray with your spouse, with your family, with your friend, whoever it is you wanna pray with them, that's what this is all about. Like I said, we do it in circles, not in rows. But let's just take some time just to seek after God, seek for his love so that it can flow out of us. Dear Jesus, I thank you for your love that you so freely give that there's nothing we can do to, to earn it, but you still give it to us. God, I pray that, that we would be filled with your love, that we would see people the way you see them, that we would see those who are lost, those who are hurting. I pray that we would love our family members when it's hard, our friends when it's hard, that love would just continually flow out of us. Fill us up with more of you, God. Amen. Anybody thankful that his love never fails us, that it goes on and on and on, that there's nothing we can do to lose that love. Here's what's great, is we can have that same love for other people, but it takes seeking after him and being filled with his love every day. It takes having that love that never fails. It takes protecting, hoping, trusting, persevering, making that decision every day that I'm going to love people. Maybe you're here and you're struggling in, in a relationship, in a marriage, in your family, whatever it is. I want you to know that through Jesus, he can heal all things. Through him, he can do all things. Through him, his love never fails. His love is continually pouring out on you, and he has more for you than what you experienced yesterday, today. So let's go into the world and let's love people. Let's build each other up and let's do it together. Dear Jesus, thank you for every person here this morning, God, that you didn't have them here on accident. I pray as we leave these doors today that we would be the church outside of these doors, that in our workplaces, in our schools, our families, our neighborhoods, that we would love people. I pray that when it's difficult, when people are annoying, when people are making us mad, angry, 
when things at work aren't going the right way, that we would just love people and they would see you in us. God, we need your love every single day. Thank you for pouring out on us and I pray that we would pour it out onto other people. Fill us up today. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Turn, give someone a hug, tell them you love them and go into the world and love everyone there.